Good morning and welcome to this webinar, which will be looking at unlocking data with Microsoft Power BI and Dynamics 365. The agenda for this session is to walk through accessing Dynamics 365 um, from Power BI, modeling the entities within, Power BI, uh, within Dynamics 365 within Power BI. Um, we'll be looking at creating charts across multiple entities. We'll also be looking at um, applying themes and kind of corporate brands. Um, and then we'll look at you know, publishing the, the Power BI um, service. So we're publishing our reports to the Power BI service, uh, dashboards and sharing dashboards. So the process that we are going to uh, follow um, is the first thing we're going to do is get some data from Dynamics 365. Um, so getting data from Dynamics 365, uh, we'll take a look at how to do that. Uh, getting the actual data. We will then look at modeling and merging the data within Power BI, which will actually give us or create a tabular model. The tabular model within Power BI uses um, a language called M to um, uh, query the data. Um, we'll, we'll set up a, a tabular model and we'll also look at DAX. Now DAX is a language within Power BI that allows further kind of calculations, customizations uh, within Power BI. Once we've done that, we can create multiple visuals. Um, we'll look at creating lots of report pages or kind of multiple report pages. And that's kind of within the Power BI desktop. So this, this part here is all within Power BI desktop. A Power BI desktop can be downloaded from the, um, the powerbi.com um, site. Um, so that's a, you know, the Microsoft um, site. Now, Power BI Desktop, there's no charge for Power BI Desktop. It is a modeling tool. It's an analytics tool. Um, there, there are charges, so you can look at kind of licensing options around the Power BI service. Now, Power BI, uh, the service itself is how you can distribute reports to people um, in your organization um, and how they can access those um, reports. So we're gonna actually be looking at how to publish your report. We'd also look at um, the model itself within Power BI um, as a service, and then um, create um, a dashboard and look at and you know talk about the options about creating um, an app. All of this can actually be shared with users. Um, once it's in the service, there is a way to actually download this as a PBIX file, and a PBIX file is the file type that Power BI Desktop uses. So there's a way to download it and take a look at it. So. The first thing we do is take a look at how to access data. So if I just launch a, um, a new kind of Power BI desktop, so this is uh, the latest version of Power BI desktop, and you'll notice it has a standard kind of ribbon, et cetera, et cetera. If I look at the top and say, well, let's get some data. Now there are multiple ways of getting data, and you can, get, you can actually bring in um, different data sources as well. So the different data sources, um, the most common ones are things like Excel, SQL Server, Analysis Services, Text Files, OData, etc. Click on the More button and it gives a full list of all of the connectors, the standard connectors available. So yes, there you can link to other databases such as Oracle, IBM, DB2, etc. etc. Um, you can link to or get data from Azure Services. Um, so if you have data in, in you know, Microsoft Cloud in Azure, we can link to um, other connectors such as Dynamics. So there is one for um, Dynamics 365, there's one for Dynamics NAV, there's also another one for Dynamics CRM, um, uh, Business Central. Scroll down a bit, you'll notice other things like Salesforce, QuickBooks, uh, um, Facebook as well, you can actually bring in um, information from. Now, the one that we're going to look at to get some data from Dynamics, we're going to look at an OData feed, which is basically an open data. Um, and we will type in our URL, because what it's looking for now is our Dynamics 365 tenant or tenancy. Um, so that's the one that we're going to use. Uh, hit OK, and it will go away. It goes out via the um, cloud, it launch, it's trying to, it's just looking for this, and it will return back our dynamics uh, kind of entities within there. Uh, so, 
Loading and quickly I can switch to okay. The entities come back. Multiple things here, lots of entities that we can scroll up and down and select and um, to see if we have uh, you know to bring back some um, data. Now we're particularly interested in, in custom information. So if I quickly just click on cust table. There is, you know, so we can preview it and we can load this data and it will. So it goes away. It's going to now load the information from that entity into Power BI. Now, Power BI is an in memory service. So once it's in here, so for refreshing, it'll be kind of a live feed. If I take a look at our, our entity we brought across, there, there is an entity. Now, another way to get some data, and that's that's a kind of just if you're if you're bringing that data, that's a way to get data from Dynamics. Another way to get data from Dynamics is to use something you see actually use the entities via the entity store, um, which actually uh, brings the data, gets the data, brings it into your own store or your your own database. And then you can um, start modeling with those with those entities. So here's kind of one that we have created. If I just launch a SQL environment and look at our entity store. So this has gone out. We've uh, got some data from, you know, so from um, yeah, Dynamics 365. And there are multiple entities here. So I can start looking or searching now. See if I start searching past table. Yeah, and it goes back and says, right, got this similar one. We brought that entity across um, with the data in there. There are a lot more fields available um, that we've actually, because we've set it up. So as we go back and now, we can start saying, well, let's load this data and let's start joining all of these tables or entities. And I can start because I'm just going to show you one that sorry, one that we have created earlier. So that was using the entity store, going back, getting um, the, the kind of data from multiple sources, and and then in terms of joining them, we can just say, well, this table is linked to this one, or this entity is linked to this via a particular uh, field or you know a key, and uh, which kind of direction it, it's linked on as well. So this is a Many to one relationship linking the, the sales uh, key uh, to the sales table. Um, and in order to create a new one, it really is as simple as just dragging and, and kind of uh, right, you know, the, the dragging the line and, and joining these entities. Okay, so that's our final model. We're going to look at some sales information. And so that's kind of getting data, but we're going to look at some sales information, some sales line information. Basically, from customers as well uh, to take a look at some of the, the kind of the, uh, the visuals or the charts that we can create. Okay, so I'm going to go click on report now. Within the report, let's create a new page. I'm going to create a, a, a new page here, so it's just called page one. Now, on the right hand side, we'll notice we have our fields. So these are the entities that brought across. What I'd like to actually do is to say, well, let's just click on something like account numbers. We have our list of customers. Okay. And now let's take a look at, we can actually use a search. Let's take a look at some line um, information. So we'll look at some sales lines and, uh, and the actual amount. Click on that. Now it gives us the amount, and it's just put a kind of table in there. So it gives us account number, line amount, etc. The other thing I'd like to do is um, let's look to see our customer groups. So there is a field called customer group. Um, so let's just drop customer group in as well. Okay, so you'll notice that we have customer group 30 and these customers there, um, and then the line amount. A very kind of, you know, just a, a, a very simple table that is. What we're going to do is move forward now and create other charts. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is just say, well, actually, I would like customer group, first of all. I'm going to sort these. So customer group, account number, line amount. I'm going to switch this visual to a bar chart, like so. And the customer group, I would like as the axis. Um, account number, I would like underneath customer group, because there's a natural hierarchy. Because what I'd like to see is my customers grouped, then the accounts within the customers, and the amount per customer group and um, account number. So what this allows me to do, if I just maximize this a little bit more, what this allows me to do now is saying, we, these are our different groups, so customer group 10, customer group 20, 30, etc. If I right click on customer group 30 and say drill down, it will drill down into all those customers because there is a hierarchy. So a customer group, account number, etc. If I right click and say drill up, it will drill back up. You can use these kind of right click and drill down, drill up features. You can also use the um, drill down um, features at the top of the chart. So I can say drill down to the next level and that will drill all the way down to all of the customers rather than just a specific um, customer group. I can drill back up again. Simple kind of chart. Okay, so let's leave um, that chart up there. Let's create another chart. Let's say, well, what I'd like to see now is our sales. Say line amount. So we're interested in some other kind of line amount. They just given us a total for that. Um, but we'd like to see line amount by some kind of date. Let's just search for date. So let's say sales table. There was a oh, creation date. So I've got rid of these line amounts. So creation date, I'll put in there. Line amount again. So now it shows us when these sales, um, let's say orders were created over multiple kind of years, so 2011, 12, 13, etc. Um, you'll notice there's a natural hierarchy with dates. So it and the hierarchy on the right hand side, it's um, so year, quarter, month, day, um, which is great. Now you don't have to go in that order, you don't have to use them all. So, for example, if I'm interested in year and then month and day, I can remove quarter. So what will happen now is if I right click on, let's say, 2012, drill down, it will show me the months. If I right click and drill up, it will show me the um, years again. So if I drill down on everything, it will just go down to all of the months for all of the years. If I drill back up, it shows me all of the years again. So that's great. Now, because there because we've linked these kind of entities, if I show the uh, model again, because there is a natural link between, well, between all of them, what we can do is we can kind of highlight different things. And all of the charts now can be made um, as interactive charts. So if I click on customer or group 30, You'll notice that it will highlight the um, that amount in total. So the total amount is is quite a large number, two hundred and seventy odd uh, million, and um, it will highlight these there. There is another way to do something as well. So if we're not if we don't want to really highlight them and we'd like to um, filter instead, then we can click on the uh, the top there, format, edit interactions, and we can say right. If I click on this top chart. I would like everything at the bottom filtered. So what I need to do then is to say filter. So you click on the top chart and then I'll filter the bottom. So now if I click on customer 30, it filters information. Customer group 80 filters information. If I right click on customer group 80 and say drill down, and then I have lots of customers, there's a large customer there, I click on that customer, it will filter the information. If I drill up again and say, show me this customer group 10, right click, drill down. I'm interested in this particular customer, US 021. 
they're the sales amount. So now you can see our sales amount for that customer. So let's move on. Let's create something else. The next thing we're going to do is say, let's create a new page. This time, we do have in our logistics table, we have some information around um, some addresses, and some shipping information. So let's take a look at these things are these countries. Oops, we've got some country regions. So on the country regions, these are all of the sales um, for multiple for all of the countries that we sold to. So we've got France and UK and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So now we can say, okay, that's okay. What I'd like to do is to use the sales amount as the size of, of the let's say the, the, the circle. So if I drag sales amount into size or line amount, now it shows most of our sales are have been you know kind of south the regions there's so India and um, Russia and there's quite a few in the in North America etc. Um, we can take it a step further and we can say great let's remove that let's go back now and let's take a look at our countries. And underneath country, let's put in, actually country is, uh, is okay. Let's look at cities. Drill down. And it is actually, it will drill down to, and it's trying to find the cities. There aren't many there. Um, so we just had uh, one there. So we can actually drill down there. Now if we remove country, just to see, it shows all of the cities as well. Okay, so that's kind of simple kind of mapping that comes with um, Power BI. Um, so that's just using the standard mapping features in Power BI. We can take that a step further and say, okay, let's do the same again. Let's say country region, like so. Uh, we'll use our line amount as the size. Now, yes, I can copy and paste and copy and duplicate pages, but I just want to show you from kind of start again. Um, and this time there is another one called the Arc GIS map provided by Esri, which is part of the Power BI uh, service as well. So if I click on that one. This is an online map. So it does go out to the service. And now it shows us a lot more detail. So it shows us when I say about a lot more detail. We can see. We've got our country region, our line amount, but the other things that we have available is if I click on edit, now we can use other maps as well. So if we say base map, well, we'd like a dark canvas as a base map or a light canvas, or actually let's take a look at, you know, kind of a street view behind this. We could have things like um, put some boundaries in, we can put different symbols on there. Um, we can look at some infographics, bear in mind a lot of them are kind of US based, so what's the population per country, etc. Et Back to report. report there. Okay, so now I can start highlighting on, on these. So if I zoom in, now it is, um, zoom down all the way. So we've got postcode information, and it does go quite far down, right? so um, okay. just kind of street level. Uh, the map and that's using uh, the Esri mapping service. So that's a little bit on mapping. Um, so we've created some kind of charts, we've um, we've you know, made them kind of interactive and linked different charts. We can spend hours on charts and so we're not, we're not really going to do that. Um, and we looked at kind of some mapping as well. Now let's take a look at just putting these charts on kind of one page. So that's quite simple to do. So we had our line amount here. So move it down a bit. Like so and let's now just polishing it up a little bit now. So this one here around our line amount, uh, line amounts for for different years. And then let's take our map and zoom out. I'm just zooming out there. And what we'll do is we'll copy this map and 
in here. Okay, like so. And there it has all the different ones there. Um, and zoom out a bit further. Now, if I click on an area to show the interactors in Germany, again, it will highlight you and it shows where those sales were. So um, let's do a, let's put a filtering. Okay, as soon as I click on an area within a map, I'd like it to be filtered. And that's where it goes. So if I move that, if I say, show me all of the sales in India, click on that and it will filter. And to make it completely interactive, um, I could say, right, show me all the sales for 2012. And it will just highlight these. Okay, so it's just, we're filtered. And, okay, let's have, this is filtered as well. Or 2012, drill down, there's a spike there, all of the sales in December 2012. That's, so it's interactive um, with, with our kind of map applied as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we'll take a look at the, you know, so we have um, our page, which which looks okay. Um, and so what I'd like to do now is if we look at some corporate branding and some styling as well, so style guides, etc. So what we can do is we can apply things um, as kind of images if we wish to. So we could say, right, first of all, if I create a page, uh, create a new page which to show you. So create a blank page. You go to the page properties. There's some uh, page backgrounds and information. So I can say page background, add an image. And what I'd like to do is to add an image called this HSO background image. Transparency there. Um, and so now it's added my kind of corporate style to the page. So. If I did the same on our page one, just to see, it does uh, does kind of transform it. So our page one and our kind of style guide. It also helps us because it shows if things are, you know, within the uh, kind of our page, um, etc. Now we can put some headers in if we wish to. So we can have a text box and say. Sales information and make this a little bit bigger. So let's change this to 32. Bold. And again, we can have all of our themes and, and, and styles if we wish to. Move this at the top and there's our sales information. So we've got some sales information um, with our kind of corporate theme applied. There are also other things, so corporate, we've got some corporate background. But there are other things we can do as well. So we can actually have themes. So we could say, well, let's import a theme. Yeah. And we can now import you know, a, a kind of theme if we wish to. So that uses a, um, so it actually uses a JSON file as a theme. Now I've already got the theme applied. So let me, I'm just gonna switch this to another theme. So I'm just gonna say, switch this theme to a, default theme and you can you'll notice all of the colors etc change um so if i click on this one and say format data colors that's the color palette that it's using now yeah. um so if i wish to change it to something else i can so if i just show you another one so if i say oh, electric not really so uh yeah. And then look at the colors again. So the default color, the color palette has changed. And that's what it's actually doing. It's changing the color palette um, on, on or within that theme. Okay, so that's kind of corporate branding and, and theming. Um, but I'll just quickly show you a few more charts. And so we were looking at, so there's some other ones there. So we've got some custom amounts and we'll click on amount and it, you know, we can have a, um, a matrix kind of a tabular view at the bottom. Um, there's drill down on within there as well. So we can, if we had, you know, the uh, different layers, different levels, we can start drilling into that. Actually, let's put that in. 
So let's quickly show you that. So on this chart here, we have our rows as country. We would like to see uh, underneath country, let's see if we can drop in city. So now, if I drill into one of the countries, it shows the cities and I can drill back up. Okay. Um, so that's kind of um, matrix styles of charts. We can look at things like timelines and you, know, you can look at a um, different kind of charts. So let's look at all of the uh, things for this um, company um, or this company. Gauges, pretty, pretty nice and neat. A lot of people like gauges, so you can have different multiple gauges there, etc. Uh, location, we've seen some of the location stuff. We've seen some of the um, uh, the Esri mapping, which we saw earlier. So just some mapping there. And because it is a live service, it, will take, it takes a few seconds to go out and, and bring that kind of information back. And then uh, we've created multiple pages. So once we actually created all these pages, we're, we're happy with that. I, I did mention, I'll show you a bit of DAX as well. So in terms of DAX, we could say, well, Line amount. Let's let's take a look at line amount. So we've got our line amount field. Okay. So what I'd like to do, so we know the line amount, but what I'd like to do is say, well, actually, let's create a new measure. Okay. Right click, create a new measure, and it gives us this bar at the top, which is anything that's happening. This is all all DAX now. So I can say, right. So what I'd like to do is take my um, sum line amount that one and multiply by i don't know a factor of one um at 10 percent added to that so that gives us measure two but i'd like to call it uh, line amount 10 percent added on okay enter and then there's my new measure called line amount two there so if i go to new page and say right on it interested in my line amount and i want to see all the values don't summarize them all the values there and now i'll say line amount of the new measure um you can see the fact we're learning on there so if i just actually if I sort it the other way there. okay Um, okay, so that's through, you know, so there's some DAX and you can carry it. You can, there's, there are lots of references online around just DAX within Power BI. Okay, once we've um, done all that, what we'll do is I go back to uh, one of the, uh, let's just quickly show you the process flow. So we've created um, a, a model, we've created visuals, we've created his report pages because that's what these are here. Um, now we'll take a look at some DAX. Now what we'd like to do is publish this as a report to the service. So the first thing we need to do is actually save it. So I just click on save. So I've given it a name and then we can hit the publish button. So what that does is we have to log into the Power BI service and you need an account. So you can sign up for a kind of free account if you don't have one. Um, yeah, so a, a time based, I think you get 30 or 60 days. And then we can say, right, I'd like to publish this now to one of my um, workspaces. So I'm just going to say my workspace select. So that's actually publishing this this whole pack now or this PBIX file, this Power BI pack, to the service. So once that goes around and once it's published it, it's actually sending all of that to the cloud to the Power BI service. We can then open it open it up. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is open this within Power BI. So it's actually logged me in because I've already logged in. It goes to my um, Power BI as a service. So this is in the, the Microsoft Cloud. And there are my um, report pages. So I've got my well. If I be, let's go to yeah this one this one will do um, actually, customer amount 
So there's another one there, customer. So what, what I can do is say, OK, let's add this chart. So I'll pin this chart to a new dashboard. I'll say HSO Power BI. So I'm creating a new dashboard now. And I'll keep the current theme. OK. And on this chart, I also like pages always look good on them. Um, dashboard pages, so I can say, let's take a look at all of our orders. So I'll pin that to our existing dashboard page. Uh, and one more, just let's just do a, another one that we created today. So we'll look at uh, okay, so just sales information. Actually, this, this would be good to show the whole page. So what we can do is say, pin the live page instead of the just that chart so it'll pin the whole page to the existing dashboard okay so now we've pinned these pages to this 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 dashboard so to take a look at the dashboard i'm going to workspaces my workspace dashboards there's the one i've just created hso power bi i don't know click on it there are our tiles they're known as tiles so i can resize them now Say this one here, make it a little bit smaller, like so. Um, do that size, and these two up here, make them smaller as well. I can move things around like that and there's my kind of dashboard page now you can have multiple charts on here and you can resize them etc etc you can also ask a question of your data you can actually ask some uh, kind of q a and, and question um so I, I just encourage you to kind of play around with that and just ask questions so things like you know sales or line amount for uh, 2012 you know and it will pop up with a chart and it will create a chart but once we've actually done that we can add other tiles as well if we wish to but now we've talked about, we've created a dashboard, we've published a report, we've created a dashboard, we'll actually now share this. So clicking on the share button will allow you to share it within your organization. So you can actually type in their um, email address and you can share it. What will happen is they'll receive an email with a link to the dashboard. Um, if they don't have Power BI, it will ask them to sign up to it, but within an organization, they should come back. They, they'll probably have Power BI if it's within the organization there. So um, that's um, a kind of workspace that we created. The other thing that we can do is we can actually create an app as well. So if I just quickly do something like this, you know, so we can actually create an app workspace. And the only difference between an app is if I click on that, you know, Yeah, so, yeah, so as you're going to mention the um, app thing. So once you've published an app, a user will then be able to get apps. So within your organization, it's, it's just a way of controlling it um, a little bit more rather than giving them access to the full kind of workspace where they will see your dashboard and then any reports in there, any workbooks, data sets. So it's a, it's a more... Um, it's a controlled environment. Um, so that's kind of sharing and the app workspace and uh, creating a dashboard, pinning pages. So I'll go back to our webinar now. Let's just say, okay, that's fine, I've got it. So we've been around there, we've created the data, we've published the reports. The final thing I did say I'll show you is um, we shared it with users, downloading it from on the service. So if I go back to our service and said report, we click on knowledge report like so. So that's the one that we're on. We can actually say file and download a PBIX. There is a way to export to um, kind of PowerPoint. Um, you can't create a, a PDF a standard, so a lot of people ask if you can create a PDF. Um, and but there is a way to uh, to export to the PowerPoint, and you can download it. Once you've downloaded your PBX file, you can open up um, a desktop like we are here, and just open that PBX file. 
Okay, so that's where we have your PVX one. So, quick recap of what we've, what we've seen. Um, so we've got some data uh, from the Dynamics. We also saw how we can actually connect to other um, kind of data sources or get data from other um, kind of uh, sources, entities. We took a look at the um, entity store and how to get data from an entity store. Uh, we kind of model the data and joined it up, um, and that's kind of modeling and merging. We created a, it creates a tabular model for us. We looked at the, you know, the DAX language and created a, um, a quick kind of very quick formula in, in DAX. As so a visuals, we created the report pages. We then published the whole thing to the Power BI service as a report. We looked at the, um, the kind of uh, from uh, the, the service, uh, we looked at how to create a dashboard and pin lots of pages on there and share with users so they, they, they will receive that and download the PBX file. So that's kind of being round. Um, that, that's a kind of the process of getting information, ingesting information, visualizing it, um, manipulating the data, analyzing it, and then sharing it. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time. Um, and thank you for your time. And any questions, you know, feel free, feel free to reach out to us. So um, uh, Debbie's the best person to get get a hold of. So there's an email address. Thank you.